Let's now take a look at the second term in the, um, the weak form. That's this term over here. And it involves the derivative of the weighting function as well as the temperature. So my temperature variation is that, and the corresponding variation of the derivative of the temperature is that. And since we have a linear interpolation, the derivative is constant over each element. For instance, if I want to know what is this value, the derivative over here, it's just going to be you know, this value minus this value divided by the length of the element. So that value is going to be T2 minus T1 divided by delta x, correspondingly for this element and so on. And that's the derivative of the weighting function. And again, that's going to be piecewise constant. For instance, that is this value here is going to be W2 minus W1 divided by that distance, which is delta x. And then I'll have to go and figure out what it is for the second element and so on. And then I need to plug this these variations in here. Um, and let's say I'm doing it over the first element. This is constant. This is constant. And k is constant. So I can bring all of this out of the derivative of the integral. And I'll just get integral of, uh, of dx over the element, which is the length of the element. And this, you know, so I have to multiply this by this. And w1 is going to multiply t2. It's also going to multiply t1, so I'm going to get you know terms such as w2 uh, or w1 t1 and w1 t2. Similarly for w2, as I've talked about before. And when you look at the you know the stiffness matrix form of it, what this means is these terms will go into appropriate rows and columns of the stiffness matrix. So you have to do the bookkeeping like, OK, this term, you know, I know that it's going to go into the first row of the, um, it's, you know, whatever coefficient I have here will go into the first row of the stiffness matrix. Which means that this term affects the stiffness matrix, whereas these two terms affect the, um, the force vector on the right-hand side. And there's a very important takeaway from this, um, which is I, you know, if I want to know the algebraic equation at this particular node, which temperature values will it involve? I'll say, OK, it's going to involve, uh, so, so I look at what all W2 is multiplying. W2 is multiplying T1. It's multiplying T2. That comes from integral over the first element. And then W2 will multiply T2. Uh, in this, in this integral, where it'll also multiply t3. Which means that when I write the algebraic equation, and when I collect terms, the algebraic equation at this node will involve the temperature value here, and it'll involve the temperature value here, and the temperature value here. It won't involve the temperature value here. And we can come up with a general principle. So we look at, OK, the algebraic equation here will involve this node. And then we will temperature at this node. And then we will look at the element elements that are connected to that node. So I have this element connected to the node and this element. And then I look at what are the nodes connected to that element. So I have this node here that's connected to that element and this node here that's connected to that element. And I can deduce that the algebraic equation at this node will involve these three temperatures. And I can generalize this. So I have this complicated mesh analysis. And you know, I'm thinking about, OK, this node is connected to these elements. And then those elements, in turn, are connected to these nodes. And so I know this node you know, answers the right relationships connecting the temperature at that node or displacement when you go to structural mechanics to all the corresponding nodes. And that, I think I feel like that's very useful when I'm in I'm an ancestor.